All right, so an impressive win for the Denver Nuggets without Nikola Jokic, Aaron Gordon, Jamal Murray. Man, on the Clippers side of things, there's two ways to break this down, but let's start with the Nuggets because Reggie Jackson had this incredible game where he was absolutely unstoppable. Reggie Jackson put two halves together and just continued to make play after play. I mean, efficient on the night. Um, started off the first half and, and went into the locker room like, hey, they got to slow him down. But he continued in the second half. And when I tell you just controlling the tempo of the game, the pace, 35 points, 13 assists, initiating a lot of the offense, um, being unselfish when need be, scoring when need be, defensively, you know, had a solid game. I mean, I just think that we always say it doesn't matter who's out there. They play professional basketball, too. And you could tell the Nuggets bench was ready to step into this role with three of their key guys, three of their starters out. You know, it's, it's, this is so wild, right? Because not only was Reggie Jackson terrific, but Michael Porter Jr. really was a non-factor, three of 13 from the field. But it was the old man. DeAndre Jordan. Hey, careful he with the, the old man. <laughs> best player. 21, 13, and 5 he had. You know, they had to kind of dust him off a little bit, lube up the joints, and get him out there. Caught four lobs He's in this game. Yeah, but, you know, at this stage of his career, he doesn't even go into a game expecting to play, much less to have to perform at this level. But he was incredible as well. That two-man punch really kind of provided everything for this Nuggets team from an offensive standpoint. And then their defense. They held this Clippers team to 104 points, you know, never allowed them to get out in transition. They only, the Nuggets had 11 turnovers in the game. And while we can talk about the Clippers, this is really as much about the Denver Nuggets because if Reggie doesn't play that well and DeAndre Jordan doesn't play that well, they don't win this game. So they had two veteran guys who've been main cogs on good teams in the past. So this is not unfamiliar territory. They just haven't been asked to do that in their roles now on this Nuggets team until tonight. And I'm telling you, they were probably chomping at the bit, right, to go out and play at this level, and both of them performed uh, at an elite level. I mean, they, the Clippers were trying to double Reggie down the stretch, get the ball out of his hand. He was so effective. At, at really just coordinating the entire offense, uh, staying in attack mode, and he got his rhythm early and just stayed in it. 15 of 19 from the field, three or four from three. He shot better from the field and from three than he did the free throw line. Yeah. The only two or four at the free throw line, but he did everything else. Impressive, impressive performance. And I don't know if Michael Malone will have a more satisfying victory all season to be able to win with that roster, you know, having your main cogs out on the road against a team that was starting to play a little bit better basketball. Th this was impressive. Yeah, and DeAndre Jordan, by the way, his first 20-point game since March of 2019. So it's been a while, and again, like you said, stepping up in that role. Um, that fourth quarter, though, Denver outscoring L.A. 36-16. to It just seemed like Denver was calm and cool and collected with Reggie Jackson leading the way. Whereas anytime the Clippers had an opportunity, they looked disjointed. Well, you let a team hang around, hang around, hang around. And I think regardless of what you can say in the locker room, regardless of what T. Lou can say, sometimes when you see three guys, and especially when Jokic is not in the lineup, you see guys like that not in the lineup, whether you want to or not, you let your guard down a little bit. And it seemed like the Clippers in the first half did not come out and impose their will and establish the game that they wanted to play. And so Denver, you hang around, you hang around, you let a guy get confident like Reggie Jackson. And then on the other end, you know, you're not playing solid defense. And then on the other end, you have two of your guys in Harden as well as PG that aren't shooting well from the floor. You know, there was a play that I think there's definitive plays down the stretch that decide games where Russell Westbrook comes down, facilitates probes, gets the rack, dishes it off to Kawhi, he misses a layup. Come down. PG passes up a three, gets it back, gets fouled, but passes up a good shot. So then you start second-guessing yourself, and it just seemed like the Clippers were kind of playing on their heels the whole night because they let the Nuggets get hot and get rolling and feel confident. Yeah, it, it's not a light switch. You know, you just can't turn it off and on. And so for me, just watching a couple things I took away from the Clippers' perspective. 
there's never motion or movement. It's always like one guy gets it and he tries to beat someone. And then if it's not there, then he kicks it to someone else. And it's like there's almost like no method to what they're doing right now. And I, and I think for Ty Lue, a lot of that is, you know, you have this incredible talent and you, you figure, okay, I'm just going to let them try to figure it out. But I think this is going to be a scenario where he's going to have to, I think, take a hold of this thing from an offensive standpoint and put in some schemes that get the ball moving and get bodies moving because there's just not flow. They just try to overwhelm you with their talent. They, and at this level, that's just not going to work. And at this stage of all of their career, because they're all still really good players, great players, but they're not the dominant forces that they used to be a few years ago. And so they're not going to overwhelm people. They're not – teams aren't in awe of them. And so they're going to have to make some tweaks offensively to get a little more pace, uh, get a little bit more movement offensively to try to create easier – opportunities in the half court you know to be honest with you I think this is a team that needs to highlight the hockey assists or the sacrificial cut because you don't see that a lot with the Clippers um, the teams that play extremely well you know and move the ball I, automatically I gravitate towards Golden State um, you had guys that were coming down swing swing you had guys that were coming down cutting to clear the lane so that somebody else could get a corner three and GA is right. You don't see that a lot with the Clippers. And, you know, there is an offensive style to that, but there's also a time where you have to come down and have ball and player movement, and you don't see that a lot on the offensive end. Yeah, a lot of figuring out to do on that Clippers squad. No doubt about that. That's Denver's eighth straight win against the Los Angeles Clippers.